I'm developing a game, and this is Devlog 6. Having rigged the character, the next step was to use the rig to create the basic animations idle, walk, run and jump. In the case of animating characters for games, utilizing a rig is probably the most common. Unlike traditional frame-by-frame -frame animation, where every movement has to be explicitly defined on every frame, it's enough to specify the pose at certain frames, so-called keyframes, and interpolate the animated properties in between frames. The function, or f-curve in Blender, estimating the intermediate animated properties can range from a simple linear function to Bezier, with highly customizable control points, Bezier being the default. This means that animations are not bound to discrete frame durations. Instead, something referred to as normalized time can be utilized, where zero corresponds to the start of an animation and one corresponds to the end. Prior to this, my animation experience consisted of simple animations using simple rigs, performing simple models viewed from afar. Limited, to say the least. The first step was to acquire knowledge and expand my understanding of animation, at least enough for me to understand the basics, to allow for the creation of the four animations I needed now and to build upon for the more advanced animations in the future. The workspace was also simplified by disabling and hiding irrelevant bones and handles. The idle animation was the first to be created, the purpose of which is to give the character some movement despite the absence of player input, keeping the character looking alive. I chose to be boring and made this first idle animation a simple breathing animation. The first and last keyframe would be the same to allow for animation looping, and they would be representing a state of complete exhale, as opposed to the complete inhale keyframe, which would be located in the middle but a bit closer to the start keyframe, making the exhale longer than the inhale. First, the exhale idle pose was created, by posing the feet and legs in a relaxed way, but different from each other to avoid twinning which is the unnatural state when the opposite side of the character are identical, which is extra apparent during movement. Then moving the hands down by the side, relaxing the fingers, especially on the non-primary hand. For the inhale idle pose, air is filling up the lungs, expanding the chest and stomach to some degree, the back straightening out, including the head. Shoulders moving up, affected by the inflated chest. Lastly, the pelvis going forward a tiny bit for exaggerated effect. Finding a balance between exaggerating the properties, risking a comical effect, and making them too subtle, risking them being invisible in-game, was challenging. And I'm not sure I've found it yet. The walk animation was initially created using one of the most basic walk cycle keyframe sequences, which consists of the following. Contact, passing, mirrored contact, mirrored passing, and lastly, contact to close the loop. First, the feet and legs were correctly placed for both unique poses. And then flip pasted for their mirrored equivalents. Secondly, the torso was adjusted to introduce height difference between the poses, which will play out as bobbing. The pelvis was also rotated on two axes, towards the leg that will, or is, handling most of the weight. In a counteracting manner, the chest was rotated the opposite way. Similarly, the arms were positioned to counteract the legs, and the hands were relaxed to convey the ease of walking. The limited number of keyframes for this cycle consequently resulted in a simple and dull animation. This was improved by introducing two new keyframe poses. The down pose, placed between the first contact and passing poses, would as the name suggests become the lowest point of the character in this animation cycle. One foot and leg just about leaves the ground, while the other leg absorbs the post-contact impact. 
linked arms were moved closer relative to their position in the previous keyframe to make the change of swing direction slower and less robotic. Additional minor adjustments were also done, like retaining the pelvis position to better sync up with the leg movement. Opposite to the down pose between the passing and mirrored contact poses, an up pose was added, the highest point of this animation cycle. One leg fully extended and the other anticipating the ground contact. The arms closer to their swing end state starting to slow down prior to the change in direction. Similar to the down pose, additional changes were made. These two new poses were also flip pasted into their respective place in the animation cycle. These new keyframes made the animation more dynamic, but it was still missing some subtle physical details to make it more natural, like head bounce. A side-by-side -side progress comparison highlights the effects of these details, but more importantly, the additional keyframes. Highly related to the walk cycle is the next animation I made, the run cycle. One of the most basic ways to implement the run cycle would be to emulate the keyframes contact, down, passing and up from the walk cycle, but with exaggerated features. To allow for more airtime, however, an additional keyframe was added, and to simplify, the down and pass posts were combined. Making this run cycle keyframe sequence consist of contact, passing, kickoff and up, and mirrors. I used the contact pose from the walk cycle as a starting point for the run cycle, but none of the others, because despite the similarities between the two animations, they are still widely different. For instance, the gap between the legs is smaller when walking than when running. The front leg is just about to come down with way more force, while the back foot is in the air from recently being used to push off the ground and propel the body forward. Although perhaps controversial, a small lean forward from the hip was added to convey forward momentum, but the head is still looking forward. Since the range of motion for the legs is greater than when walking, the pelvis rotation was magnified, as well as the counter rotation of the chest. The arms were bent at the elbow and moved towards the body, being more involved than when walking, but less than they would be if sprinting. The arm on the same side as the forward leg was moved backwards, while the other arm was moved forward and inwards to uphold the center of mass. To convey the effort of running, the hands were formed into fists. Next, in the passing post, the front leg has just connected with the ground and is moved backwards to simulate moving with the ground. The other leg is compressed and in full swing forward. Since this is the first pose after landing, the torso was lowered to simulate the weight. Both the pelvis and the torso movements were reduced, moving from one extreme toward another. And so were the arms. Like the name of the kickoff pose suggests, the supporting leg was moved all the way back and the feet rotated since the character is about to leave the ground. While the other foot was moved forward, getting ready to touch the ground. The torso was moved upward, fully extending the legs. The pelvis and chest continued their rotation, while the arms continued their transformation. Lastly, the up pose, once again the highest pose, where none of the feet are touching the ground, and the back one having just propelled the character forward and up, while the front leg is getting ready for the landing. The pelvis, chest and arms are almost at their extreme again. These four poses were then flipped and used for the remaining keyframes. The result was decent, but could easily be made better by adding head bob and some minor feet bending. But what really made it much better was polishing the arm movement by taking weight and direction of motion into account. The difference was quite noticeable. The last animation, the jump, was by far the most complicated to get right. Not only because of the number of keyframes, possible variations or the physical aspect, but also because of how it would be integrated into the game. Therefore, an upwards jump animation was chosen as a base. It would consist of the following keyframes. Neutral, which I made to be the same as the initial idle keyframe, and then anticipation, stretch, jump, 
fall, contact, overshoot, and recover. The anticipation pose is where the character gets ready for the jump. This was conveyed by compressing the body and rotating the torso to once again account for center of gravity. Moving the feet, legs, arms and hands into a position of potential energy. This potential energy is turned into kinetic energy in the stretch pose, where the body is extended, legs stretched pushing off the ground, and arms moved in an arc upwards for momentum. The head was also rotated to make the character look in the direction of travel. In the jump pose, the body was moved upwards and once again compressed as the feet left the ground. The arms continued their movement up and the hands relaxed a bit. The fall pose is where the upward force turns to downward force and ground contact approaches. The legs were stretched out a bit, the arms brought down a bit, and hands made even more relaxed. The head was rotated downwards, once again looking in the direction of travel. The contact pose is where the character makes the first contact with the ground. Next comes the overshoot pose, where the downward force compresses the character and the body is dampening the landing. And lastly is the recover pose, which in this case was set to the initial state. This left me with a decent jump animation. To improve it further, some keyframes were spaced differently, and some new ones were added to amplify some physical aspects. Although the full jump animation was initially animated with a height difference for a better overview, this was subsequently removed, since jump height will be handled in the game engine. In addition, jump duration will vary in game, which is why the jump animation needed to be split up into jump, fall and land, with the fall animation being loopable and thus the jump duration customizable, making the final jump animation actually consists of three separate animations. Which together with the idle animation, walk animation, and run animation make up the four initial character animations. Additional ones will be added and current ones may be subject to change. But for now, this will do. Thanks for watching.